So question seven asks, uh, comparing stars S2 and S3, these two, which one is expected to live shorter? S3. S3, and why? That's right, it's more, clearly it's more luminous than S2, right? But, but because they are both main sequence stars, we know then that S3 is also going to be more massive than S2 according to Eddington's mass luminosity relation. And we just found out that the more massive is the star, the shorter it lives, okay? So S3 being more luminous and more massive, main sequence star is going to uh, live uh, for the shorter period of time compared to S2. S2, uh, and that's one of the questions later, is would be a representative of a red dwarf, right? It's uh, cool main sequence star, not very luminous. And um, uh, Stefan Boltzmann a lot tells us that therefore it has to have a small radius, right? Low surface temperature, low luminosity. Uh, the radius must be also then small. And uh, so it's, a, it's an example of a red dwarf. So here the answer is a, S, uh, sorry, B, S3 is going to live for a shorter period of time. Then question eight, uh, the main sequence star with the largest mass is which one of these? Hmm? S5, right? It's the most luminous main sequence star uh, out of these shown here and uh, then we know that uh, it has to have the, the largest mass. So the answer is C. Among the main sequence star, the one that is expected to live for the longest period of time is which one? Why did you say S7? Is S7 main sequence star? It's very hot, has a low luminosity. It is what? What are S6 and S7? What are they? What group? We have three groups. White dwarf, okay? So don't talk about S7 as being a main sequence star. What are the main sequence stars here? Okay, so I'm asking here in question nine, uh, among the main sequence star, the one that is expected uh, to live for the longest period of time is which one? S2. S2. Because it has the smallest mass. It has the lowest luminosity, therefore lowest mass, therefore it's going to live for the longest period of time. Which of the following stars is a red dwarf? S2. S2. Which of the following star is a red supergiant? S1. S1, right? It's cool, very luminous, must have large radius. Stars S5 and S6, these two, have the same temperature, right? Their temperature is roughly the same. Uh, but star S6 is less luminous than uh, star S5 because of A, it has a larger radius, it has a lower luminosity class, it is farther away, it has a smaller radius. That's right, Stefan Boltzmann law, where the luminosity is some constant times the radius squared, temperature to the fourth power. So they have the same temperature, so S6 must be less luminous because it has smaller radius. Um, so it's D. Comparing stars S4 and S5, which one is expected to live longer? S4, lower luminosity, lower mass, hence longer lifetime. Which of the following is a white dwarf? Well, we just went through that, right? It's S7. Which of these stars are all main sequence stars? Well, if you don't know this, then there is no hope. Uh, 
They are S2, S3, S4, and S5. And then the sun is represented on the diagram by which one? S3, S3 right? It has luminosity of 1 and the surface temperature of about 6,000. Okay? So it's S3. Okay, so you will get on your final uh, a diagram similar to this one here with questions similar. If you understand this, and I don't think it's all that difficult to understand, uh, then uh, you should uh, basically have 10 questions done correctly. <laughs>